Hey everybody, man, I got serious sun in my face. I am trying not to get into an accident here. But um, I am making a video in the car. Um, I'm gonna, I have a video where I'm, I'm doing some tilling in the garden and uh, that'll be all a part of the same one. But what I figured I would do is instead of me uh, trying to talk as I was doing that, I'd talk later and do that. Uh, and I'll just put the, I'll put them all together and you can see, I'm not tilling, I wasn't tilling anything. Um, I was tilling a walking row, so it's not anything, you know, I'm not trying to be super, uh, I don't know what the word I'm trying to look for is. I'm not going to be planting anything there, so I'm not trying to be, you know, super, you know, I guess anal about everything. I just want to get the ground broken up because I'm, I'm trying to, uh, I had to let it get way too overgrown in the walking rows and, you know, I've been, I've been using the broad fork to break it up. I've got videos up where I was doing that and I've been using, I'd break it up with the broad fork then use my grub hoe to really try to get the dirt and the grass clods up but uh, that was just a lot of work and a lot of uh, sweat which is not a bad thing but uh, I remembered that I have actually me and my father-in-law share um, we split the cost for an electric tiller and um, so I got that back from him and I used that to kind of do one last little um, busting up, if you will, of the the grass and everything that was in the walking row. I need to do it to the other row, uh, the other walking row, where I, that one for the most part is done because I've forked it and, and hoed it and that sort of stuff, but I might do a, I might run the tiller through there just once or twice just to get, you know, a little bit extra. Um, I have a little piece of it at the end of that row that I need to fork because it's I didn't I wasn't able to get to it and there's still grass growing but I've really got to um, I've really got to take better care of the walking row so they don't get so overgrown I'm not gonna put mulch down like I did last time I put cardboard down and then I put mulch on top of that and it worked for a little while but the grass started to go around it and started to poke through it actually um, because the the grass that we have here is uh, I know a lot of what's out where I am is a type of a sedge and it's very very thick and very strong and that sort of thing so it just a lot of times would poke right through and um, so basically what I'm what I'm going to do or I'm going to try to do is I'm not going to Put mulch down this time. I'm just going to leave it dirt because then if it, it, when the grass starts to grow back, I can go through with the hoe and, and just, you know, chop it down to keep it, keep it at bay better. Because the, the way it was before, it was hard for me to hoe with the grass coming in through the, the cardboard and the mulch. It was hard for me to hoe and because, you know, the mulch and the cardboard was there. If it was just mulch, it would have been easier, but with the cardboard being there, I would, it would, it basically made it where I couldn't hoe, and I would have had to have gotten down and pulled all of it by hand, which I, I'm just, I'm not going to do that because I hate doing that, you know, and that's, that you can call me lazy and that's fine, but I can't stand getting down and trying to do it all by hand. So I'm leaving it, I'm leaving the walking paths as dirt so that I can go through there just like I do with the um, growing rows I can go through with the hoe whether it be my garden hoe the suede hoe whatever hoe and I can just cut the weeds down and keep them better controlled um, so I'm gonna do that but yeah it's moral of the story keep them keep them better under control so you don't have to do what I'm doing where I'm basically having to re-till those sections of the garden. Um, now there are some sections in the growing rows where I'm going to have to 
Uh, I don't know if I can get the fork in there or not, but I'm gonna have to, to bust it up because some grass has gotten in there. It's it's primarily by where I've got the um, the remesh where I'm gonna be planting, where I've had vining stuff, and it's just, it's harder to hoe around in there and get really close in. Those are the, the areas that I'm gonna have to. I can hoe a lot of it, but where it's really up close to the remesh and the rebar, I've gotta just get down and pull up my hand. But I don't mind doing it if it's not, you know, if I don't have to do all of it by hand where I can hoe most of it and there's just a few spots where I've got to pull it by hand. That's fine because that's not, you know, that's not that much work. So, but I got to get those ready because I'm going to plant some, uh, some snake beans. But I'm trying to hurry and get this done so I can get stuff in for the fall garden. I've already got some seminal pumpkins and I'll, I'll do another video of that pretty soon showing they're starting to run already um i think actually i have two or three seminal pumpkins and i think i have one it's either a, a mutation from a seminal pumpkin because the seeds that i planted are seeds that i kept from pumpkins from last year and they're heirloom seeds but they're i mean i don't know there could have been a mutation so it's either a seed from a mutation i mean it's either a, a mutation from a seed that i planted or, and I can't remember, a friend of mine gave me some Cuban pumpkin, um, which if you see it in, in the grocery stores, it's called calabaza, which is, calabaza is pumpkin in Spanish. So um, the term really would be calabaza cubana, which is Cuban pumpkin. So she gave me some seeds for, uh, for that because it should, yeah, I think it grows pretty well here in Florida. So I think I may have put some in and one of them came up so that might be what it is because it the leaves look completely different from the seminal pumpkin so we'll see what happens uh it'll be a little bit of a surprise the calabaza gets a little bit bigger than the seminal pumpkin at least the seminal pumpkin variety that i have um so but i've got the pumpkins in i still have we're starting to harvest black eyed peas so you know, I'll just let the, I'll ride those out until they're gone. I just ordered some more um, yellow pear tomato. So I'll be putting that in when it gets here because I'm out of seeds. And then I ordered some more uh, okra and I may put some more of that in. But, um, but yeah, I still have the, I still have the uh, black eyed peas are, are still doing really well they're still flowering and producing bees so I will will ride that out until they start to die back or start to quit putting out bees and then I will um, cut all that down and uh, then I can use that space for something else and I'm interested to see how it works because since I put all those peas in there it should um, it should fix nitrogen back into the soil, so hopefully it'll be a little bit better. But I don't know what I'm gonna put in there. We'll figure that out when the time comes. But then, later in the season, probably more so towards, probably like Thanksgiving and Christmas time, I'll be, I'm gonna be growing some lettuce. And uh, here in Florida, it's, it's best, I think, to wait times people start putting in lettuce in the fall so that it you know has time to grow and be ready you can pick it before winter um, because the winter even with a lot of the lettuce if it gets too cold it will kill it but here you know we don't have our cold doesn't start until much later and then the cold that we do have is not as severe as up north so if you plant, if I planted lettuce seeds right now, they would germinate and they would grow, and, you know, it would start to grow, but it would bolt pretty much instantly. And when, uh, when lettuce, when any sort of green, whether it be lettuce, spinach, um, any sort of, any sort of like kale, anything like that, once it bolts, it goes, it, the, the lettuce gets bitter. The greens get bitter. So you don't want to, you don't want to do that. And the heat is what makes it bolt. So 
what I'm planning on doing is just starting it late to where, you know, even if we have, you know, some frost or whatever, I can cover it if it gets too bad, but lettuce actually likes a little bit of frost. But if it gets too cold, I can cover it and it'll be fine. But um, I don't want to plant it right now because it will just, it'll, it'll bolt and go straight to seed and then the lettuce will be no good. So um, that's kind of where I'm going from there. Um, other than the, what I've mentioned, I'm not sure exactly what else I'm going to be planting for the fall. Uh, but we'll, we'll see. Um, I did buy another mulberry tree. It's a, it's a variety called Tice. And um, it is supposed to be a native uh, Floridian mulberry tree. And the berries are supposed to be the... the um, person that I bought it from described it as the berries are a lot fatter than the like a uh, typical ever bearing and it's um, she said that they're very good tasting so it's only about a couple maybe a couple feet tall one and a half to two feet tall so it's not you know not gonna be getting anything off of it for a while but um, yeah, it's, it's very good, in very good shape when I bought it. You know, she, all, all, everything that she had when I bought it from her was in very good shape, looked very healthy. <clears throat> so I just planted that the other day. And another thing that I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be looking at making some worm towers. And I saw this idea from a permaculturist from Australia named Mora Gamble. And um, she, uh, Basically, you get PVC, big PVC pipes and you drill holes about three quarters of the way down, or no, about a quarter of the way down. You leave a quarter of the pipe solid and then three quarters of the pipe you drill, I think she drilled five millimeter holes just all around the bottom of it. And she digs a hole, puts it in the ground, up and you, you completely bury the holes that you've drilled. And then you fill the hole back in and then you put, um, you get some composting worms and you put those in, in the tube and then you feed the tube from the top. And the idea is the worms have every, you know, they have stuff to eat in the tube in, well, as she calls it, the tower, but they can come in and out of those holes. So what they'll do is they'll come in and they'll start, you know, they'll be attracted to the food They'll come in, they'll eat the food, then they'll go back, they'll go out into the garden and come back in for the food, go back out into the garden, stuff like that. And as they do that, they're taking their own castings and all that sort of stuff and they're tunneling all in the soil and all that sort of stuff. So it's kind of a easier, kind of a, 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 a cheaters type way to get worm castings and just worm life into the soil and I need that in my soil. So, you know, I'm planning on putting two or three of those in the garden and I just gotta go on and order some of the um, the composting worms. So hopefully that will that will work because you know then I don't have to build a compost uh, a worm system because I would really love to have worm castings. They are one of the, it's, worm castings are like liquid gold for the garden. They're, they have fertility, they have micro, uh, microbiome in it, so it, it, it feeds the soil in more than one way. It's not just putting, you know, NPK into the soil, it's actually putting bacteria and stuff like that in the soil, which is, you know, just like you and I have bacteria in our bodies that, you know, are part of our immune system. The soil has bacteria in it. That's a part of its immune system, a part of the soil health. So definitely want to be looking at doing that. But anyways, that's all for now. And like I said, I'll be putting the videos together showing where I was um, tilling using the electric rototiller so you get an idea of what that looks like if you don't know. And I will be back again next week with a new video. Um, thank you for watching. Please like, Please comment, subscribe, share, um, 
and help me to grow this channel. I can't grow it without help. So I really want to build a good community of, of Florida gardeners, um, but just gardening in general. So um, share it with anyone you think would be interested. And thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.